Hi, and welcome to this 10 minute session. Uh, introducing you guys to uh, Lawrence the Labrador. And this is Lawrence, who you may know now. He does agility with me. Um, and he, for a Labrador, is doing awesomely well. Awesomely well. Um, he does a little bit, he has done a little bit of gun dog work. This is him with a prey dummy. And, you know, what a handsome boy with all of the skills. But, you know, that is not where we started with him. So... Yes, he has done his gold uh, at Barking Rad, and yes, he does agility. Uh, we compete regionally. Um, but as a puppy, he was, here he is on Brandon's back. He was, uh, he was very sociable. And because I didn't know as much then as I know now, I was simply delighted to have a really sociable dog. Uh, my first dog, Jess, was reactive. Um, that's Jessie there in the red collar. Um, and Brandon is on the left and Lawrence is in the middle. Um, so to have a dog who was nothing but sociable, that's little Lawrence with Brandon, uh, was a real relief. So I indulged it. And over time, anyone with a really sociable dog will know it can lead to just a little bit of uh, frustration reactivity because your little pup wants to say hello to all of the dogs. And of course they can't. Um, so as a puppy, he was always quite interested in training. He came from a really good pedigree. He is the only one I've had who's a proper kennel club registered dog. Uh, Brandon and Jess uh, were just, uh, just they were dogs. Uh, uh, Jess was a rescue, Brandon was from a farm, and Annie was also from a farm. Um, so he had lots of working drive and was very trainable, but also uh, sociable. And, you know, he would just fall asleep when he was tired. And he liked to play with toys and play chase. And, and all that was great. Uh, because he loved the other dogs so much, uh, crate training, I have to say with him, was a fail as a puppy. He was absolutely uh, overwhelmed by the urge to get uh, in and snuggle with the other two. Uh, we had a stair gate up and when he was small, he would force himself through the bars um, or even just clamber over the top. And he'd get in bed with Jesse, who really didn't love him. Uh, but in the morning, we'd find them snuggled up together and she would kind of be there going, take it away. I hate it. But nevertheless, they had snuggled all night. And again, not knowing any better, we thought, well, at least he's quiet at night and, and we let it go by. As a pup, he was born in a dry spell and uh, it passed me by that during his early socialization, he didn't really have wet walks, he didn't paddle, and therefore as an adolescent and an old dog, he is not as at home in the water always as you might think, although he has learned. And as a puppy and an adolescent, because he was overly social, we had an issue with pulling on the lead, which was a tough one because at training he walked like an angel. <laughs> you would trot along, I never pull on the lead, look at me, I'm amazing. And then you'd go through the gate to leave training and he'd be pulling and lunging at the other dogs. Um, and we did try and condition a head collar, which was the go-to recommendation um, at that training school at that time. And um, I, you know, I've conditioned him to wear a muzzle, but for some reason couldn't get the head collar working. And I do wonder whether he has so much smush around his face that it really was uncomfortable. But whatever the reason, as a puppy, uh, he was a delightful handful. Um, but as I say, a little bit frustration reactive, even at less than a year. Um, so as he has aged, uh, we got him through his training, you know, he turned into a really super adult dog and we managed that frustration reactivity. Um, I've used him as a stud dog 
few times. Um, for those of you who are interested in, in that, it isn't uh, a quick earner at all. You need to get your dog thoroughly health tested, hip scores, elbow scores, eye tests, blood tests, so that you know that uh, you're not introducing any uh, genetic conditions into future Labradors. Um, so we did that enough to cover the costs and then Lawrence the lab developed uh, an enlarged prostate uh, because of his high levels of testosterone. So the go-to treatment for that is to neuter them, um, which we didn't do straight away. But the other thing is he was a black dog and an entire dog. And he was attacked a total of five times when he was just walking nicely on a lead, ignoring everyone. So because he was on a lead, it was fairly easy to deal with what happened. And it was during that period that we really got our middle position nailed. And what it meant was if I saw a dog walking towards us, and if your dog's ever been attacked, you'll know there's a look. So dogs walk towards you with a completely straight back. They don't do that nice arc around to say hi. They walk straight at you with a really steady pace and a look of intention, intention on their faces. Um, and if we saw that, Lawrence would jump into the middle position, which was between my legs. And I then had my hands free to deal with whatever was happening. Um, obviously it's risky because it means you could get bitten on the arm. Um, but that I think left him with a bit of a bit more lead reactivity. The last time he was bitten, he was being walked with my daughter and she didn't even realize the skin had been broken until he got home. We just thought he was wet, but actually he was bleeding and she had been walking on a footpath and a dog had escaped from the front garden and just come out and bitten him. So we did then decide to get him neutered. And I have to say it made a massive difference uh, to his overall levels of angst and his huge and overwhelming social drives. Now, his behaviour did not change overnight. So I'm not saying if you've got an angsty, overly social Labrador, go and get them neutered. But for him, what has happened is in the years following that, he has really uh, relaxed around other dogs and he is capable of showing much more relaxed behavior. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Uh, so as a pet now, as a companion out of the three dogs that I've got now, which is Brandon who is now 13, and uh, Annie, who is eight months. Uh, Lawrence is the most companionable. Um, and he and I are probably the most tuned in to each other. Brandon, as he's aged, is a little bit anxious. Um, and he, he misses people. He, he likes to be around people and not just one person. Uh, whereas Lawrence the Labrador is very much one person. He uh, will check you out and see if you've got treats. And then he's like, well, if you haven't got treats, I don't care. He'll come back to me. Um, but he's also the first to notice if I'm sad, if I'm tired. He's quite affectionate. Um, and I really, I enjoy his company. If we're going for a walk, he is the one who is mostly around me even if they're off lead and he'll go off and smell but he'll generally come and walk quite close to me the reality is on those walks Brandon is behind and Annie is uh in front or I'm having to uh manage her with a, a little bit of play and treats as we move along so I really enjoy his uh companionship I guess at home and uh out on walks and with hindsight, I think one of the reasons I do enjoy his companionship so much is that out of all the dogs, I didn't just do the traditional training, is that I've used him as I've gone through my instructor and behaviour training. And 
oh, I have worked with him therefore at a closer level. So one of the things, uh, one of the first really complex behaviors I trained him to do, I'll see if I can share my screen again, was um, running to his crate, opening the door to his crate, going in, closing the door and laying down. And I think I've got that here. I don't know how visible that is. Um, oh no, this is another one. This is a, another complex behavior. Go to your crate, fetch your bowl out of your crate, bring it out so that you can have your dinner um, and place the bowl down and lay down. So those sorts of uh, more complex behaviors are, they give you a slightly different relationship with your dog. This might be the go to bed one. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? So this is a, when we lived back in Letchworth. Um, but for me, learning how to do these sorts of things with him has led to maybe a slightly different sort of relationship. Um, oh, what a good boy. So it is, it's, uh, I'll stop it there. It's been a really interesting journey with him. So agility is complex, clearly. Teaching them to work at a distance, to do weave poles um, and their contacts and all the different turns that you need. But I think in terms of my relationship with him, the uh, more tricks and obedience stuff. So if I'm walking, um, back when I did more rehab work with uh, other people's dogs, if I'm walking dogs and I have a situation and I need to move them, he's the one I can just say change. And even though I've got other dogs, he will move behind me and change from left to right hand side. Um, if I need him to move around the house, I can just indicate this way. And it's very subtle. And I feel like we communicate really, really well. Um, so having said all of that, just from a training perspective, those two tricks I showed you, going in your bed, closing the door behind you and laying down and also fetching your bowl out of your bed, bringing it and laying down. You know, at the time with Lawrence, it felt like a really big journey that we managed to do those things. And many of you, if you've had more than one dog, will know this. Somehow with your second or your third or fourth dog, um, they just acquire those skills because it's part of your repertoire. So now Annie can go and open a crate door, go in a crate, and lay down, and close the door behind her because it just became something that she saw him do. Uh, she will also go and collect the dinner bowls after they finished, uh, which again, for Lawrence, I just thought it was amazing that we could do that together. And she will not only collect her own, she'll go and collect the others for me. So um, I feel that bond with him, I think, because I went through that process with him. He will, uh, and he hasn't copied this yet, he can open the back door and let her out if uh, she needs the toilet. Um, so I feel like the fact that we've got all of those cooperative skills means we have more of a relationship. Um, and he loves doing it. And I obviously pay well. He is a Labrador. He is hugely motivated by food. He loves his uh, banana-shaped prey dummy toy that we train with. And he will play with a wide range of toys, uh, but still uh, a piece of food for him is, uh, is an absolute winner. So that was just a little bit about um, the lovely Lawrence, the lab. I'm sure there's loads of other things I could tell you about him. If you have any questions, anything you'd like to know about his training or maybe how we dealt with the issues that we had with him, then please uh, feel free. I'm sure there must be other people with overly sociable Labradors out there um, with all the same uh, issues that we had. Although I did have three dogs when I had him, so <laughs> that was always quite the challenge. Okay, bye for now.